Should we know? You see this carpet? Supposed to be warm, right? Wrong. Because beneath this layer of deception is just a slab of cold concrete. I can use it as a freezer during the winter. It's crazy. I'm done with having my feet suffer through what seven months of the year. So I'm making myself a four times four meter behemoth of a rug to cover up this entire space. And maybe finally I can get some heat back in my life. And if you thought for a second that I'd be making it easy on myself by making a simple design. Well, <laughs> you must be new here. Of course, Howl's Moving Castle. One of my favorite movies. Might regret that later. <sighs> There's only a few minor problems. We're gonna have to build a four times four meter wide frame that can stand on its own, which can't even fit in here. And it has to be stable, like how? <laughs> If I mess this up, it's gonna be a real expensive mistake because I've got like $3,000 worth of supplies and materials here, so... Yeah, <laughs> that's exciting. I think before we just throw ourselves head on into this, it's a good idea to make a little test piece first, figure out how the tool works and everything. And it's uh, totally not an excuse for me to make a cute little cherry blossom rug for my room. Oh no. <laughs> we got a frame, cloth, yarn, tufting gun, and of course Nori, my personal assistant. And of course my tufting gun is pink! <laughs> I mean if there is a pink option, I will always take the pink option. Always. What we have to do first of all is just take this cloth and hook it on a bunch of these nails around the whole frame, like really stretch it out, and then we can get to the tufting. Ow. Uh, ah. Come on. These are the little frickers that keep stabbing me, so <laughs> thanks. Love you. It's bouncy. Good to go. Okay. Yes, outlines at last. If it looks even remotely like this when it's done, it's gonna be so cute. It's tufting time. I've really only watched two tutorials, but you know, that's all it takes to be able to call yourself an expert on the internet. So I'm basically gonna start with the outlines here, which is gonna be a white color through the loop there. Then we can take our thread through the loop and pull it. Okay. And there we have it threaded. What I think is gonna be the most difficult is just to have the right speed and also it's very important apparently to keep the pressure in because if you don't push it in it's gonna cause tears and trouble and stuff okay fine i'm just talking to delay this okay i'm a bit scared <laughs> to be honest first time tufting oh jesus christ this is a lot harder to control than i expected okay It's supposed to look like that, not like that. Okay, it's not too bad, not too bad. Uh, it goes very much like this, but it's fine. Let's just move on to the other outlines and try to get some more area covered. now tufted it's looking good and to prevent all these threads from just falling out we have to glue it so i'm gonna apply some of this backing cloth with a little bit of watered down pva glue it's been a couple of hours and now the glue should be completely dry which means we can finally cut this whole thing down and glue the edges Right, first time I'm actually seeing this rug from the front. <laughs> so cute! <laughs> oh my god. Okay, it just needs a little bit of a trim and then it is complete. I have 
completed my first rug. Oh, and I love it so much. It really helped with just trimming those edges. It looks so much cleaner and nicer. It's definitely a little wonky here and there. Like all the lines aren't exactly straight, but for my first rug, very happy with it. But the thing now is that since I've completed this, it means I have to go out in the warehouse in the cold minus degrees and build a wooden frame. And I just, I don't want to. It's so much effort. Why is it so hard to start new tasks? The thing about our warehouse is that it's not insulated so very well. And right now it's winter in Norway, which means there's minus a lot of degrees and I have to work out here because it's the only place the frame will fit. Oh, I should do this project in the summer. Also gotta admit, woodworking, not my favorite thing to do. Like it's fine. I'll do it if I have to, but <laughs> avoid it if I can. <laughs> okay, frame time, let's go. I did not realize before we raised it up how big this thing was gonna be. I mean, oh my god. It reaches the ceiling almost. I mean, I knew technically, it's just when I actually see it, it. I'm very happy with the construction though. Like it's very, very sturdy. I don't think anything's gonna topple it over, but <laughs> the size, oh no. This is the tallest ladder that I have. Not even close. <laughs> I need a lift or something to reach the top here. Uh, this is a bit of a problem. <laughs> you know, you can, you can theorize as much as you want, but when you see it in reality, it, it, it becomes a bit different. <laughs> Not quite sure how to solve the whole reaching the top situation. Uh, which I had quite frankly forgotten was an option before Hansi reminded me that it exists. <laughs> it's tall enough that I can actually touch the top of the frame. It's all I need. But that means we can actually get started now. We're trying to fasten this huge ass fabric on the frame. <laughs> This is ridiculous. I think I managed to get it fairly tight in the end because I used these like planks on the side here and screwed it in all the way to the top. But what really did the trick, I think, was on the back here. I just got the cloth underneath the whole frame, then wrapped it in this plank that I just like twisted inwards. And that just really tightened it up. If I bounce the center here, it's not bad. It's kind of like the smaller one. And I think we can actually work with this. Maybe this will work after all. <laughs> you know what that means? We can finally draw our motif on the canvas, which in itself is probably gonna be quite difficult uh, because <laughs> the projector is not big enough for this. Uh, I'll figure it out. Don't worry about it. Okay, let's go. I cannot believe that our wonky projector setup on this ladder just taped upside down on a table worked. Like we have the whole line art here. It looks awesome. All of this is gonna be covered in yarn. <laughs> oh no. If we can pull this off, this is gonna be the coolest freaking rug ever. But yeah, there's a, a lot of fine detail here and small lines, which I'm a little worried about. But uh, you know me, we, we worry about those problems when they arise later. For now, we just 
ignore their existence. We're gonna need two of these babies. That's what we start with. It's showtime! So excited! Holy crap! Let's test my friends. Oh my god, it's really starting to look like something. Just look at those outlines! And not to mention on the back, it looks freaking awesome! Slight change of plans. I think instead of doing all the outlines first, I'm gonna start filling in the blue in the background here and then sort of move upwards with the outlines. Hello? Hello? Stop calling me! Dude! Relax! Just try this. In Cogni. But how's that gonna stop spam calls exactly? Well, you see, your private information is being sold by data brokers all the time without you even knowing it. And this can lead to minor annoyances such as spam calls and emails, but also more serious stuff like identity theft, online harassment and stalking. Good news! You have a right to protect your data, but since it would take you literal years to reach out to every single data broker, Incogni does it for you. It's super simple. You just sign up, give them permission to reach out on your behalf, and they will automatically request your personal data be removed and deal with any objections they might have. I don't even have to do squat. I can just sit here, drink my coffee and do nothing. It's great. So if you want to be more private online, then go to incogni.com nerdforge and use our code nerdforge to get 60% off an annual plan. And back to the bread. It's starting to look so good! I mean, the stained glass look and all the freaking blue tones together. So good. <laughs> but man, is this a lot of work. <laughs> I mean, just doing the outlines here on the blue parts alone took two whole days. I quickly realized that this rug is gonna take forever to make. Surprise, surprise. So I asked Isabel, who's been with Hansi and I as an intern for a couple of months now, to help me out because she's here for one more week. So hopefully that's gonna speed up the process a little bit. Yeah, uh, I'm also starting to get a little concerned about the weight. <laughs> with only this, it's already starting to get pretty heavy. And like when all of this is covered, is the frame gonna hold up? Like... <laughs> <laughs> I don't know. Hopefully. Stay strong, my friend. And also the yarn issue, like we've spent so much yarn already. I don't know if it's enough. <laughs> I'm just crossing my finger because there, there are no yarn stores here with the proper yarn. So uh, that's interesting. Okay. Isabel, are you ready to rumble? Yes. <laughs> Let's freaking do this.
it's finally taking shape. Oh my God. This is taking so much longer than what I expected from the beginning. <laughs> Who would have thought making a rug could take this long? It's been like, I don't know, one and a half weeks on this. Yeah, I mean one and a half weeks since we started tufting. Not the whole frame and all before that. So, <laughs> oh, but all the shades of blue are so pretty. <laughs> I mean, just look at that stained glass effect. Mm. But yeah, since this is taking so long, Hansi reached out on the internet and asked if someone had a tufting gun that we could borrow. And there was! So thank you so much to the stranger who lent us their tufting gun. This has meant that Hansi has been able to finish up all the line work down here, while Isabel and I have finished up the colors up here. So we now have double the speed, baby! Ah! Maybe we can have some faster progress now. Also, I didn't notice until now, but this little cloud here kind of looks like a butt. Not gonna lie. Okay, so the plan now is to finish up the line work on the creature, like the castle. What do you call it even? I'm confused. But anyway, finish up the line work first, and then we can start adding in some color in one corner while the other person glues up the frame around the top here. And we just sort of switch between us. Line time. Ah! almost done with the tufting it's just a little bit down here a little bit up there and then all the tufting's done <laughs> it's starting out so good Guess what? The tough thing is done. What? Which I'm very thankful for because my hand is falling off. <laughs> but there's still just a few small things left to do and that is to glue up the rest of the backside, cut the whole rug down, which <laughs> I'm a little bit worried about, and then do a little bit of trimming. And then we have a complete rug. How about that? Really felt like it would never be done. <laughs> All right, finishing touches. Guys, the tufting and the gluing and the trimming is done! Oh, oh my god, I am in love with how this turned out. And that trimming at the end there really just cleaned it up so nicely and made all the lines so much crisper. Mm. But now, of course, we have to take this whole rug down and put it in its new home. So I'm just gonna go in there, prep the space, move some stuff around so we can move this into its new home. We're gonna put the rug in our sort of lounge slash editing area over here. Uh, this is where I spend most of my time when I'm not filming in our studio part. So now we can finally get rid of our super cold floor issue. I just have to move these furnitures around a little bit so we can actually get it in here. It's gonna go like from here-ish all the way to like behind the PC. I mean, with all that furniture on top, you're not even gonna be able to see the rug. It's gonna be almost completely covered up. Hmm. Yeah, that kind of sucks. 
I'm feeling pretty conflicted right now because on one side, I really want to take this rug down, finish it up, just see it done, put it in here, stop freezing on my feet. But there's a little part of me dying inside by the thought of just covering it all up with furniture and like not being able to see it. Like, it feels like such a waste, you know? I don't know, I'm in a bit of a pickle here. I, I don't know what I want to do with this. <sighs> yeah, I'm gonna have to think a bit and come back to you. <sighs> I just need a bit of time to make my decision. I've been thinking a lot back and forth and I think in the end it would just be a shame to cover this entire rug up with furniture, not even being able to see it and appreciate it. What I'm gonna do is I'm gonna keep the frame, just remove the legs and attach it to the back wall of our warehouse for now. I really wanna take it down eventually, I just wanna find a good home for it first. So if you know of, I don't know, some public place in Norway like a school, a library or something that wants a big ass rug to decorate their place with, then let me know. Send me a DM or something. Because <laughs> I really want this rug to have a proper home where it can be seen and appreciated. And in the meantime, it will just live here in our warehouse and brighten up this space a little. Because it's very dark and very sad. <laughs> Anyway, thank you so much for watching this video. I hope you found it satisfying and enjoyable, or both. <laughs> and of course, a huge thank you to our patrons for continuing to support us. You're freaking amazing. And now it is time. Let's have a look at the final result. <laughs>